Hey there, welcome back, I'm the Fnatic, and in today's episode, we're doing the scouting report on Patrick Baldwin Jr. I know, it's a little late, he's had a bit of a rough season, but let's take a little look at what he's done. Obviously, the biggest note about him, 26% from 3 on the season. His shooting percentages, they just ain't good. I'll go ahead and flash him up on the screen for a minute, but, uh, yikes. Now, we have a couple things that we can notch this up to, because obviously, we aren't inclined to just call him a terrible shooter when this is a man that was entering college looking like the best prospect in the nation. And now he's sort of slid into a guy that could be a 20th pick in the draft. And when you're looking at this, there are a couple things that we need to take into consideration. First off, he missed a lot of the season. Um, COVID and injuries and when you take that into account it makes a little sense for the shooting slump but not enough where we can say 26% from three is acceptable let alone 34% from the field these are not numbers that are going to get done in any meaningful way but we can come a little slack because of how inexperienced he was um, with the very low quantity of games that he played. Again, I'll just go ahead and flash that up on the screen for you. But there are a couple other things that I think that we really need to take a look at. Um, because obviously he still has some talent. He just might not be the guy we thought he was going to be anymore. Now, he's not exactly the most explosive athlete you'll ever see, uh, especially not for his size. Uh, but he projects more as a player that kind of floats around the perimeter. And he can explode into the paint at times and mix it up down low. He's got good size for a wing, and he's a smooth runner for a 6'10 guy. He has pretty good mobility, but just not great burst or suddenness. Um, more like an endurance guy. He'll beat you over the long run, but not at any given moment. Um, he's been looking bad recently, but it's still a little too early to give up on him when we're considering that he's a player coming in college that was ranked as possibly the best player in the class. Now, obviously, again, with the terrible shooting percentages and a few, not too many problems, but when you take those into account with his injuries, it's looking like he's not the player we thought he was, and that's causing his draft stock to slide. I actually don't hate this for him, because it lets him come into the NBA with a chip on the shoulder, which I really love for these guys. Um, when you have... When you have a down year, and that's the year you go into the NBA, it makes you feel like you have something to prove. This is a man we were considering as the number one pick, and now we're considering him as a top 40 pick. You see, this just really it can throw guys off. And that's not always a bad thing, because when you're slumping, sometimes what you need is just... Instead of keeping things the way they are and sort of hoping that things go back to normal, you can try to shake it up and you can start realizing, hey, these are the flaws in my game. I need to address them or I'm not going to be what they thought I would be. Now, there are a couple odd comparisons for him. Given his injury history and the sort of under-the-radar path he's going to take into the league if he chooses to if he chooses to declare in this upcoming draft we're obviously looking at um a player that if he can be what we saw from him in high school a really really good player he could be a very impactful player in the league um there have been a couple of comparisons of him because of that to my uh poor man michael poor jr not anywhere near as good but when you look at their career arcs it definitely seems very similar and there are a couple things i don't love about michael poor jr especially with him having a max contract and we've basically not seen him play and that's definitely a concern when we're looking at when we're looking at our friend here patrick baldwin but overall He's a rather positive player, 
Um, six foot ten is good length. I don't love his two hundred pound frame, but he can put on more muscle. He can continue to develop. He's got he well he handles the ball pretty well in the open court, and he's definitely got a, um, a small forward skill set given the way he plays, and he's got the size for it. He definitely has the ability to play that position. He has the ability to play it well. We just need to see him get more comfortable on the court. That's the real thing here is that when you don't play too many games and he only played 11 games and with 314 minutes, that's a little... It doesn't give him a chance to settle in. And it's something like what we saw from Kate Cunningham where he was injured and then he came in and then he was really bad shooting again. Um, shooting really, really atrocious uh, percentages from the field. He was averaging something in the 20% as well for a while. He was shooting 1 of 12 in games. And these weren't summer league games, mind you. These were real NBA games. And... That's definitely something that we can look at and say, hey, it's starting to work out for Cade Cunningham. As he gets comfortable, he becomes really, really good. It's something we saw with Michael Porter Jr. too. It's something that we've continuously seen from players like this where they get injured and they don't play much. It's just sort of delaying the... It's delaying the development, but it's not stopping it. Uh, he still definitely has the potential to develop into what, into some of the things that we thought he'd be. Um, though, given the time lost, it's unrealistic to expect that he'll be as good as we thought he'd be entirely. But there are definitely some aspects of his game that we can certainly look at and say, yeah, he's got the chance to, he's got the chance to be what, uh, to be what we thought in those situations with that kind of skill set and overall it's pretty positive all things considered he's obviously he's obviously got that injury history and you know it's a lot like James Wiseman where yeah sure maybe he didn't play much maybe he didn't look so great when he played um I let me let me just take a moment to say that James Wiseman was pretty pretty damn incredible in the time he played in his three games but it's just the sample size and saying how we can't really judge players that have been injured like this because we don't really know what they're capable of we just know what we know what the lowest bar to expect from them is and to be fair it's a pretty low bar and that could definitely be a pretty bad thing. But, you know, all things considered, he's been through a lot with COVID and the injuries and falling from uh, the top one player to in the 40s and the 20s and depending on what draft you're looking at. And with his shooting struggles, all things considered, I'm rooting for him. I don't think he'll be... A superstar player in the league but I could definitely see him I don't even want to say that I expect him to be a solid role player I want to see this man get an NBA contract and I want to see him maybe put up 10 points per game in his career if he can do that for me I'll call his career a success not even because it would be a net positive on the court just because everything he's been through everything he's continuing to go through and how he's still going to have a shot. And the fact for a player to have a shot like this still, and really when he's projected as a potential second round talent, this is the guy you want to draft with a second round pick. He is high reward, but very low, um, very low make or break, where he could be really, really good, but the odds aren't exactly in the favor, but that's what you want out of a second round pick. You don't go into your second round pick expecting for them to develop into a superstar player, but you usually take them knowing that they are that they have a chance to. Um, taking a chance on a guy that could be really, really good 
is sometimes just better than taking a guy that you know is really, really good. I don't know. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.